In today's video, we'll be tackling Eric Dubay's complete lack of understanding of basic physics. He is coming. Cover your butt. Help fight the Flat Earth bots by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more weekly content. 200 Proofs Earth is Not a Spinning Ball by Eric Dubay. 20. If Earth were truly constantly spinning eastwards at over a thousand miles per hour, vertically fired cannonballs and other projectiles should fall significantly due west. In actual fact, however, when this has been tested, vertically fired cannonballs shoot upwards an average of 14 seconds ascending, 14 seconds descending, and fall back to the ground no more than two feet away from the cannon, often directly back into the muzzle. This is probably one of the stupidest misunderstandings of physics that flat earthers have. Mostly because observing Newton's first law is so easy and it happens naturally in our daily lives. Let's go back to middle school where we all learned about Newton's laws. Newton's first law, sometimes referred to as the law of inertia, states that an object at rest will remain at rest and an object in motion will remain in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. Pretty much, if you don't apply a force to an object, it won't move, and if you already have an object that is moving, it will continue to move with the same velocity and in the same direction unless you apply a force. The latter being an important concept for this proof. Let's break apart the example that Dubé gives us. We'll have a moving cannon and a stationary cannon. If force is applied to both cannonballs in an upward direction, we'll call this X. Since the stationary cannon doesn't have any other velocities, the cannonball will simply fly up and then back down. The moving cannon has a horizontal velocity. We'll call it Y. So we have to add force X to force Y. Since the forces are in a perpendicular direction, they neither add up nor subtract from each other. Instead, the forces will affect the trajectory of the cannonball. At the same time as the cannonball is moving up, it will also be moving horizontally. The combination of the two forces will result in the cannonball moving in a parabola. Now, I know what you're thinking, but R&D, that's just CGI. It's just math. It doesn't actually happen in real life. Well, it does. So, what we should expect from a cannon being fired straight up while it's moving horizontally is that the cannonball will travel in a parabola and end up close to, if not, back into the very cannon that fired it. If this is still too abstract for you, Newton's first law is also why when you hit the brakes in your car, all the objects that aren't attached to the car fly forward. It's also why you wear a seatbelt. Dubé understands this concept so poorly that he's about to repeat the same proof nine times, and he thinks that each and every one of them is original. With that said, proof 21 is the same as 20, except that Dubé uses helicopters and hot air balloons rather than cannons. 22 is the same as 20, except that Dubé uses Felix Baumgartner rather than cannons. 23 is the same as 20, except that Dubé uses rain, fireworks, and birds rather than cannons. 24 is the same as 20, except that Dubé uses cannons rather than cannons. Wait, that's the same fucking proof. The cannons are just shot east and west rather than upwards. 25 is the same as 20, except that Dubé uses commercial airplanes rather than cannons. 26 is the same as 20, except that Dubé uses airplanes and a stupid quote rather than cannons. 27 is the same as 20, except that Dubé uses airplanes rather than cannons, so I guess it's the same as 26. 28 is the same as 20, except that Dubé uses clouds rather than cannons. 29. If the Earth and its atmosphere were constantly spinning eastwards over a thousand miles per hour, this should somewhere, somehow, be seen, heard, felt, or measured by someone, yet no one in history has ever experienced this alleged eastward motion. Meanwhile, however, we can hear, feel, and experimentally measure even the slightest westward breeze. Hey look, you said something different! Except that we can measure the spin of the Earth. Foucault's pendulum is a fantastic experiment that can be conducted by anyone who has the motivation to do so. Pretty much all you need is a weight, a string, and a way to measure angles and measure time. 
you set up the pendulum and you let it go. The Earth will rotate underneath the pendulum and you'll pretty easily see the Earth's rotation. There are some things to keep in mind when doing this experiment. Because you want the only variable to be the Earth's rotation, you need to make sure to remove all other variables. Making sure the pendulum is indoors to eliminate wind moving the pendulum. Making sure the release system used doesn't add extra spin or motion to the pendulum. While this does complicate the experiment, these complications can be overcome with a bit of careful planning. So all that flat earthers need to do in order to demonstrate the lack of spin of the earth is to record themselves conducting this experiment. Consider how often flat earthers engage in far more complicated experiments, using lasers and boats, launching high altitude balloons, launching rockets, using GPS and professional surveyors. Watching a weight on a string move seems like a much simpler experiment. You will, however, never see a flat earther conduct such an experiment. I will let you come to the only conclusion as to why flat earthers don't run this experiment. There will be a link in the description to someone who has actually run the experiment. Let's also address this idea that somehow we should be able to feel the constant motion of the earth. We can't feel constant speeds. We can only feel acceleration and deceleration. This is why a plane ride feels like a car ride even though one is moving several times faster than the other. It's also why you feel your stomach lurch when the elevator first starts moving, but not during the whole trip. Proof 30 is the same as 20, except that Dubai again uses clouds rather than cannons, so it's also a repeat of Proof 28. 31 is the same as 29, except that he quotes someone else saying that they don't understand how people don't feel the earth move, because we all know that having someone else say the same thing you just did gives your argument more validity. And with that, we have covered 12 more Proofs by Eric Dubé. Next time we will have a special guest who will explain to Eric Dubé that he is not really measuring distances the right way.